Hi YouTube, Mountain Boy here. I had a number of questions about how I built my shipping container home and how to develop property. So I thought I'd kind of lay out a bit of a process for how to do this. I think the first question you have to ask yourself is, what do you want in a property? Like, is it gonna be recreation? Is it, what kind of activities do you like? Is it some place to retire some days? It, you know, kind of those the hunting, those types of questions. But along with that, then also ties into where is its location? You know, how, how far away from where you live now is it? Are there any friends that are in that area? Is it a, a high growth region? Is there water? Is there forest? Is there hunting? Things like that. Um, kind of the next question I think is, uh, is what are the kind of the conveniences, I'll call it, like proximity to towns, which means contractors, groceries, uh, services, things like that. What kind of, uh, what kind of uh, climate is in those locations? What kind of aesthetics are you looking for? So at the time I was looking for my property, I was living in Portland, Oregon. And if you kind of look at this screen, this is essentially about two to two and a half hours driving in any which direction during good weather. And, and that's kind of an important factor. And so, you know, that's a lot for Portland. You can go to the coast or you can go out to the high desert. Uh, you can be in the mountains. There's, there's a lot of options there. So narrowing it down, I started by basically saying, where do I like to go recreate? And there's a couple places around the state. You know, I like the coast and Astoria and I like the high desert out in the gorge. And I like kind of being down in the mountains. Um, and so those were kind of like the three areas. And so then I kind of started narrowing it down. You know, story is great, but it rains for a lot of the year. You know, it, it's, is it a place I'm going to spend, you know, four seasons there? Not as much as if I was in one of these other locations. Um, so, so these are the types of things you want to, to kind of consider. Now I've got these kind of, now I'm down to kind of two areas. I might start looking at, you know, kind of, finer and finer detail. How much do things cost? Is there an opportunity where maybe I can kind of monetize the property either through, uh, you know, selling timber, growing timber, hip camp, Airbnb, you know, other, other assets like that. What are the taxes like? You know, what are the costs like? So let me just kind of show you some resources. I'm going to use as an example, an area I really love, Camp Sherman, Oregon which is kind of just a neat little town on the Metolius River, just on the east side of the mountains. From Portland during good weather, it's about two and a half, maybe three hours to get there. So it's kind of like something you can do on a Friday evening, um, you know, but with, 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 wet, with winter weather, it might be longer and also with traffic, it might be longer. So uh, these are the things you want to think about. So, so I'll kind of parlay from the costs into how much you want to spend. So one of the questions might be, how much does it cost to live there? So, you know, one thing that helps, I like a lot is looking at, um, you know, kind of a look at kind of the general information, you know, kind of get an idea of, of what's there. Here's kind of the Camp Sherman Wikipedia page. Then there's also, uh, then in this case, there's also a, uh, Camp Sherman Community Association page gives you kind of a lot more resources. It tells you kind of like what's there. And then finally, I'll go to the Jefferson County Tax Assessor's Office. So you can see here almost every county has one of these. You look for the GIS Interactive Mapper and you pull up the community you want. And then as you drill down, you can actually pick individual lots and get all sorts of information on it in terms of what the tax assessment is, the land value, the property development values. Yeah, they're, they're usually never up to kind of what retail is, but it, it's, it's kind of a place to start. It gives you a good idea where to go. So the next question is, how much do you want to spend for land and development? Here's really the important factor to kind of think about is, um, is, is what's the value of the land versus what's the value of the development? This is really important. You know, land usually you can kind of boil it down to price per acre and you can kind of do comps with other kind of pieces of property. 
then the development is kind of tricky, right? What's the this value of the structure? What's the value of, is there a well? What, how much does a well cost in that area? Roads, septic, all the development you can think about. So you want to start kind of building a list in your mind of, of what these things cost. Um, next question is, um, you know, is it something, do you have it in you to DIY the development? Or is it something you just want to turn key, you know, and, and I think answering these questions early on or kind of at least doing your research to figure out if you want to do these things is important. Also, how much money do you have going into this? Like up front, how much cash flow do you have per month to maybe put in the development of a property? And is also something you want to go into debt to do, uh, you know, because financing really varies for developing raw land because you can't get a traditional mortgage you usually have if you want to get a note for the land you have to get a land note which means a higher um uh, higher interest rate but also usually it's like the value you know of of the loan is going to be a lot less than the value of the property so you might have to bring a lot of money to the table um, but on the other hand oftentimes with raw land you can get uh, property owners to carry the note. So you basically you pay the, the down payment to the property owner, you pay the mortgage to them, and then maybe after five years, you're required to, you know, kind of pay off the note, you know, presuming you've built a house and you can get a regular financing. But these are the important things to figure out. Also factor in there that monetization, taxes. You know, so I showed you the assessment pages, but, you know, you can also say, hey, am I going to do like hip camp? You know, so you can pull up an area and you can get an idea for how much per night something would cost, you could get for it. How hard would it be to manage? Same thing on Airbnb or, or Vacasa. You can, you know, kind of also take a look at what's in the area, like what's the price points, what kind of development is like. Um, you know, so these are other areas you can kind of figure out. Maybe you could get some cash flow coming from it. If you're pretty advanced, maybe you can sell timber. You know, these these are all things to think about. So the next, you know, kind of kind of thing I would recommend in determining where you want to be is visit the area uh, that you've identified as where you want to be. Right. So, you know, for example, um, I would come out here and I would just drive the roads you know, to where you kind of know where everything is, you know, kind of where the closest town is, where the local amenities are. So here's Camp Sherman. Here's the Metolius. That's like incredible fly fishing. You've got like Subtle Lake over here. There's actually a Subtle Lake Lodge. It has a restaurant. Um, you're not that far away from like Black Butte Ranch. And then also you've got the town of Sisters for your kind of amenities. So you can kind of see within a you know, a 10 mile, 15 mile area, there's kind of a lot going on in this particular area. So I would just drive the roads, get familiar with it. Um, look for things like local festivals, yard sales, anything where you can interact with people in those areas to where you can kind of get an idea of what's going on, who are people like, um, you know, are they interesting? Uh, you know, that's where things like these little small community associations, it'd be, it's amazing how many uh, places have them. And, uh, and it really be, is the backbone of, of rural communities, you know, just to kind of keep everybody informed. Uh, next door is kind of another resource you might kind of want to look at. Um, so the other next thing is I would actually really go and spend time there, you know, Two suggestions are either camp there, you know, and here there's obviously campgrounds right in the area. You can do the Airbnb, you know, especially if you find an Airbnb that you really like, you know, something that you're like, oh, that would be really cool, you know, to go and check, you know, do something like that, that that's the lifestyle I want to live. And, you know, and so maybe that's what you want to build up and maybe you can say, hey, I can monetize it. Before you do that, though, you really want to make sure that you've checked any rules or regulations. Sometimes Airbnbs are grandfathered in, or sometimes there's kind of quite a hurdle in terms of being able to do it. In Camp Sherman, for example, a lot of the land is, is actually owned by the federal government with 100-year leases, and you can't Airbnb a lot of cabins up there. So you want to figure this out before you go. Um, the other thing you want to look out for are 
for sale by owner signs or any realtor signs, and then start to kind of call the numbers and follow up on it when you get home and just start learning about the parcel sizes, how much things cost, what are the issues. You can also kind of start, you know, developing some relationships maybe with some realtors. Um, you know, that's something I'll talk more, you know, in the next series about. So conclusions, you know, I really, it's important to develop a familiarity familiarity with the areas you like, spend time there, start to kind of ballpark your budget and, and start to kind of get some ideas about how you'd like to develop. And then, uh, and then start to kind of narrow, narrow down the process of, of, of what you want to do. And, uh, and once you've done that, you know, it, a lot of this stuff kind of starts to answer itself. And then finally develop connections. Is this a community of people that I want to live in and I want to be around, you know, because you're going to put a lot of time and effort to develop something there. These are your neighbors, right? You don't want to put in a lot of time and money and then, hey, I don't even want to be here. So I just want to kind of thank everybody, um, you know, for listening. And uh, I'm, I'll do the next one on how to find your property. So thank you very much.